All right, so I'm joined now by Congresswoman, Pennsylvania Congresswoman Madeline Dean. She's a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, also serves on the House Financial Services and Judiciary Committees. Congresswoman, thanks so much for taking the time this morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you, Jim. So, Nancy Pelosi floating a $2.1 trillion top line compromise. Is that top line figure high enough for you and other progressives? I won't speak for other progressives, uh, and I won't pick or put a nail in the top line number. But certainly what we see with Nancy Pelosi is somebody who is just very good at her art, her craft. She's a superior negotiator. But most importantly, more than process and negotiation, she cares about the policy. She cares for the children. The difference that these uh, important pieces of legislation will make. Yeah. Uh, lifting children out of poverty, the child tax credit, lifting families out of poverty, uh, child care, universal pre-K. These are the things, the possibilities uh, of this okay. bill. And so uh, I, I won't put a pin in the number because that number is moving. But so what, I, what I'm hearing, if I'm reading you co correctly, is that you would be willing to move below $3.5 trillion, that you're willing to move that pin. Uh, the number has never been fixed in stone. Uh, and what can be done, and I think one of your reporters just discussed it, was the possibility of, you know, we're talking about spending over 10 years when we talk right. $3.5 trillion. That's something that seems to be very lost in the messaging. That's $350 billion a year. Take a look at defense spending. That's $750 billion a, d a year. We don't talk about that as $7.5 trillion. So what you can do is, for example, I'm a champion uh, of both the pre-K piece and the free community college and HBCU uh, tuition. Mm -hmm. You can trim that to a program that would be five or six years, thus reducing uh. the number. Let's see if it works. And then I have a feeling when people see the engine that is pre-K and education for young people free of tuition burdens, I have a feeling five or six years from now we might say this is a program that works and is worth investing in. Okay, so what you've just mapped out there could potentially solve the problem because it would bring down the top line figure based on that do you see a vote today on this i'm an optimist i don't know and i'm not in the the negotiating room i'm really here to talk about the policies but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an optimist uh, i believe that our entire caucus wants to make sure we get both of these packages across the bipartisan infrastructure as well as the build back better this is the president's vision this is the president's agenda mm -hmm. so i'm an optimist we will move forward today okay it, it, the sad fact is though that, that some of the continuing disagreements have bubbled out in public in, in not the warmest and fuzziest ways uh, your fellow progressive uh, alexandria ocasio ortez she described moderate Democrats position as fundamentally unserious a fundamentally unserious pattern of negotiation do you agree do you believe your moderate colleagues are not negotiating in good faith well, the last thing I'm going to do is comment on a comment of a colleague but what I will tell you is I'm the youngest of seven children I am used to squabbles and debates mm -hmm. uh, and what I have seen in our caucus I have to tell you Jim although I won't tell you total content of caucus what I have seen is some of the most thoughtful remarks from all sides of our caucus the far right the far left if there is such a thing as far right in the Democratic caucus I've heard from newer members and the most senior of members uh, that we are focused on building back better. Uh, we, I am not focused on characterizing anybody else's position in this. I'm focused on the policies. Uh, think about what this will do for seniors, expanding Medicare mm -hmm. for vision, dental, and hearing. It makes perfect sense. It's the kind of things that we Democrats know we should be involved in. We know what the possibilities and the responsibility of government is, but we also know where government should stand back and stand okay. aside. So I won't comment on comments. Okay, uh, I'm the youngest uh, of four, so, so I could, I could, uh, we could commiserate on, on interfamily, yes. intrafamily squabbles there. You, you have heard uh, the, the descriptions of the current debate as basically being a make or break moment, uh, not just for, for Congress, frankly, as the midterms approach, but for President Biden's agenda. We, we, we know how this works, right? The presidents have, after their election, about a year to get their most ambitious legislative priorities done and by the way it's not certain that democrats will hold the house or the senate following 2022 further limiting the president's power do you agree that these negotiations uh what comes out of it will define in effect the biden presidency i love your question and the framing of it but let me tell you how i look at it i look at it as a make or break moment for the american people 
uh, scientists and uh, political scientists will tell us uh, what this will mean for the midterms. But what I see is the American people see in this moment an opportunity in a very challenging time in our country, an opportunity to do better, to build back better for the many. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll see where we go in the midterms. I really believe we, the Democrats, will deliver. Uh, and the American people are on the side of both of these packages, these investments, mm -hmm. transformational investments. And so the political uh, fallout may be very positive for Democrats and for the president, and certainly we'll I pray for that, but much more importantly for the American people. Very quickly before we go, officially it's still Thursday on the congressional calendar since you didn't adjourn <laughs> last night. Let me just ask you, how long does Thursday last? Does it last through Friday? Does it go into Saturday? We will have to ask the parliamentarian that. Uh, okay. the, the calendar is a little confusing and dizzying, but uh, I'm glad it's still Thursday. All right. Well, eventually it'll be the weekend. Congresswoman Madeline Dean, we wish you the best of luck in these next few hours. Thank you, Jim.